All right, guys, so this is gonna be the video that is going to be for uh, getting some of the details on the face and so forth with that original texture that we were using where it's more of a brush stroke effect. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and let's start with the eyes first, because usually once you add the eyes, that starts to bring in more detail and just more of a, a visual effect alone for the face and kind of give it a structure, okay? So when I'm looking at mine on the actual reference, I do notice that I've got the white and so forth. And because technically, if I'm looking at mine, the eye where the iris and the pupil and the highlight and so forth is, looks like it's sitting on top. I'm gonna start with that section first. Now it shouldn't be white, white, because technically it's a light blue on my picture with the filter on it. So it's gonna be more of like these tones this is already dry like if i come and i touch this it's already dry and acrylic once it's dry it's pretty much dry it's not like watercolor i have a little bit of it wet right here like if i come over here this is still to the point where i can kind of grab it and mix uh and the other thing that you notice is that my brush is a little bit smaller because we're going to be working with detail so i'm going to try my best to try to match the tone remember that this is why i try to do it section by section because I might not mix the exact same color and that's okay. This is why I try my best to finish like a whole section. If I know the skin color is gonna be this, I try to finish that spot within that day. So that way when I work on the other areas, if they're a little bit different in color, it's okay because there are other parts, not necessarily all of the skin tone, okay? So I do need to add more white to this. Usually if you're, if you're mixing the paint like this and you see how it's just a little bit darker, then this one, like if I, you kind of see if I move it just because of the glare, but you can see that it's a little bit darker. Um, when acrylic dries, it dries a little bit darker than what's here. So I do need to add more white uh, because I already got this brush dirty. I'm going to use a different brush just to touch the white to add because I don't want to dirty this brush. So I'm just going to add some white like this up to the side. Leave my brush there so that way if I need it again, it's there. And then I'll use this brush to do the mixing. And so if I notice that it's too much white and I have to add more blue to it, I grab a different brush and I go ahead. Now, if I'm gonna use the same brush, what should I do? You guys tell me. If I only have one brush to be able to grab the paint and bring it in, what is it that I should do to do this? Should I just take it and grab it as is or what's the, what's the actual technique that you guys are supposed to do? Does anybody remember? Nobody remembers how to clean off the brush properly in order to grab the paint. I think somebody said it last time. So hopefully you guys remember. What was that? Say it again. You wipe the excess paint on a napkin. Yeah. So, but even before you do that, make sure that you remove as much, like you see how I'm trying to remove as much of the paint as possible. So that way it's off here to the side. And then once you take off as much as you can, just like that, by that technique, you grab a napkin and you just basically come here and wipe off. I'm not gonna do that because I'm happy with the color that I got. I don't have to add more blue, but if I had to touch the blue so I don't stain it too much, that's the technique guys, okay? So at this point, what I'm gonna end up doing is um, I'm going to actually use this part that's here in the middle just to kind of grab. I know this white I wanna keep clean, but I'm just going to, just in case I have to add something a little bit lighter, I can grab from this part only, but don't get too much of it dirty. But just so that way I can kind of have two varieties and I'm gonna use this to do the white of my eye. Now it's not white, like I said, if I look at my, uh, my reference over here and notice I kind of went a little bit in, like I went a little bit in, if you notice, if I get it a little bit closer into the actual iris and that's okay. Uh, you know, just because of the fact being that I'm gonna cover it on top anyways, when I get to that part. So I just wanna make sure that the white of the eye uh, has this tone. This is actually gonna be a little bit darker cause it's on the shadowed side, but I'm still gonna put this color on top first just to have some of that color. And then I might put one on top of that and that's fine if I do that, okay? So I'm just gonna take the same paint and I'm just gonna come over here and do the same thing to this part of the eye. So this white of the eye, I wanna make sure that I fully cover. If I go back and add more paint on top of this where I accidentally got it on the iris, it is okay, all right? 
So I'm just going to do that. We are going to be doing some outlining uh, with like blacks and things like that and some other of the dark blue tones. So I don't have to worry about, um, you know, if I accidentally go a little bit too far out because we'll eventually go back and outline those areas, okay? So now at this point, what I want to do is, uh, because that's the light part of it, I want to make sure that I, uh, you know, and again, I'm using this middle section. I'm not going so far into this particular paint over here, but I'm just going to, same thing like I did with the white, I'm going to just bring the blue and just put some right here in the in-between to make just a little bit darker. And you guys, if you're using a different color, it's just being aware of the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. So just pay attention to the colors that you're using. And if you're going to add white, or if you want to even add black. I haven't added black to this point because if you look at my dark areas, I was using the purple for that, which I still have some available for me over here that has not dried yet, okay? The only part that's dry is this part that left stayed very, very thin. This is very wet if I were to touch that, which I'm not going to, but if I were to touch that, uh, I can manipulate that paint, okay? So now what I'm gonna end up doing at this point is I'm gonna start adding just a little bit because I did not do the, if you pay attention, my eyelids are still a little bit off. And this is where I know I had it to be a little bit darker than the white of my eye, but it's a little bit darker of a tone. So I'm just gonna go in and just add a few little strokes like that. So that way I get some kind of uh, like a light blue, but to where, again, it's not as light as the white of my eye because it's not on the picture. And notice I kind of just went like this. I just did almost like a V shape for mine. And now you you might see it and you're like, well, mine looks more round. Mine doesn't look like a V shape. It's whatever you see on yours, go by that, okay? Now on my picture, I will be honest with you, there is a little bit of a highlight here in the center because of the roundness of them. So I'm gonna go back to this light tone right here that I had right here in the middle, just to lighten it up. I can even get some of this because that other blue was originally too dark. So let me get some of this light blue. Make sure that's good right there, which is about right. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add just a quick stroke in the middle of both like that, just because I have my highlights there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush out at this point, because I think for mine, I want to do something different for the eyes, even though my picture originally had like, it looks like a dark blue color. I kind of want to play with mine. And I'm going to go into the purple. I kind of like the purple for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the paint and I don't have too, too much on here. It's not that much of a waste for me. So I'm just going to remove it with the napkin because I'm going into the purple. I'm going to wet it a little bit before and just to make sure that it's as clean as I can get it. And then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go into my purple. Since I still have some of this color, I'd rather use this tone. And I'm going to come here and grab some of that purple. I can see a little bit of red on there, but it'll probably get covered anyways. Uh, you know, even though I can see some red spots in here just because of how deep the tone in the purple is. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to concentrate on getting it to where the actual... Um, section for the iris is at. So I don't want to cover my highlight, not because I can't go back and add it because technically I can. I can, if I accidentally cover the highlight because of how small that little circle is, um, technically I can just get the white paint and put a white dot at the very end. But just for the sake of not losing where the placement is, which is right there, you can see right there, that little small circle, I'm going to try my best to avoid that spot, okay? I'm also going to do the same thing for the other opposite of the eye. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to try my best to avoid those. If I accidentally cover them, it's okay because I'm going to go ahead and you notice I'm not, I'm not going like one full stroke. I'm doing it still with the brush stroke pattern technique. Okay. So I'm just kind of going in and trying to keep it with a more of a stroke rather than a whole entire thing completely uh, solid. If you have little spots like that, it's okay because that's the technique we're going for anyways. And even though I'm still going to go back and add the iris and the highlights and so forth like that and some outlining, I still like this particular color for the eyebrows. So I want to use this for my eyebrows too. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get more purple. Make sure that it's evenly on my, you know, if I have to go on part of the palette 
and kind of just remove, not remove, but flatten to make sure that it's evenly put on my brush. That's something else you might want to think about if you're getting areas that are too thick, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and follow my eyebrow shape. Uh, I'm going to do it in sections too. So that way it kind of looks more like um, the same technique that we're doing. I'll still go back and add a little bit more, but see the white spots. But right now I'm just trying to get the brush stroke first. So I'm just going to go in and I'll do it this way so you can see what I'm doing and not cover. But I'm just going to go here, stop, here, stop. And I'm just trying to do it by section. So that way it actually looks like brush strokes, okay? And then I'll go back with some of the dark blue. So again, I don't want to get it dirty. So I'm going to get it off here to the side since I'm using the smaller brush and not the bigger brushes. I should not get that blue, um, you know, damaged with the paint. So if you notice, I was able to pick it up without even getting any purple in there. So I'm just going to put a couple of the dark blue uh, so that way I can see. So I'll put some blue brush strokes just so I can see a little bit of a difference of the tones. So I'm just going in. I'm just putting a few in between, maybe like right here, I'll put like a small one. And then this is where I'm actually going to, and I'm going to clean my brush a little bit, but because at this point, I actually want to add, so let me get my paint, because I want to add a little bit of black at this tone, so that way we can do some shadowing. Uh, so I'm going to open that up because it's brand new. I haven't opened it yet. So just bear with me, guys, as I open this. This one doesn't have the other little thing. It's got the little plastic. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of black in here. I don't need a lot. So if you notice, I put very little. I would rather put too little and then have to add more rather than waste my paint right off the bat. So this is why I'd rather uh, work on it like that. And I did clean my brush for the most part. I removed it. Uh, that purple is dark. So even if I left a little tiny bit left over, it's not a big deal. Uh, I don't want it to be jet black. So I'm going to place the black here off to the side to make a little, I'm going to mix with that purple. But like I said, I do not want to contaminate this color. So I'm going to remove as much as I can of the black that I originally got, grab some of my purple, and then put it off here to the side so that way I can mix here in the middle. And the reason why I'm mixing in the middle, and notice how little I'm mixing, like it's not a lot, but I'm mixing in the middle to kind of get a variation of the tone of that purple and making a shade of purple, because when you add black, it's a shade. When you add white, does anybody know the the vocabulary term for that. So if adding black is a shade, what is it called when you add white to a color? Does anybody know that? It starts with a T. Transition? No. But you do need to use some transition, but do you guys know the vocabulary word for what it is when you add white to a pigment? So this is shade and this is a, a tint. So the vocabulary word for adding white to a color is a tint. I'm making a tint of a tone and I'm making a shade of a tone, okay? So at this point, what I'm gonna end up doing- Are we gonna have like a vocabulary test? Um, not at this time, Eric, maybe later, but as of right now, I just want you to concentrate on playing with it. I'm just showing you the vocabulary terms because if you do have to take another uh, painting class or if you guys end up, um, because we still go over some of the stuff also in the drawing, like in the upper, upper uh, like in part threes and fours and so forth, I try to talk a little bit with the kiddos so you know some of the vocabulary words, okay? So yes, this is considered a tint. Well, this is a shade, but this is considered a tint when you add a white, okay? So at this point, I like this color that I'm working with, the shade. This is gonna be the one that I'm gonna use for the pupil. So my iris is a, a lighter version of the purple and I'm gonna add some of this dark purple and it will dry darker than that. So just be aware that when you place a color down, if it's wet, it looks lighter than when it's going to be dry. If you remember my purple last time when I was doing this, it did look a little bit lighter. So as it dries, it will get darker, okay? 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right in the center. And if I wanna mix some of this into it, like if I wanna add like some little shadows in there because you see it on yours, go for it. Like on mine, I see a little bit more shadow effect on this side. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of that. I'm also going to use the tip of mine and I'm gonna get the black only. And I'm actually going to try my best to do a, just a gradual outline around my iris. Kind of like what we did with the watercolor portrait guide. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. Try to get the tip and just kind of outline. If it's not perfect, it's okay because of the actual um, style that we're going for. It doesn't have to be that clean of a line as long as you outline it with as thin of a line as possible, okay? If you wanna get to the point where you are uh, using the detail brush for that, so I'm just cleaning this off just because it had stayed with the white and I don't want it to get damaged. We're not going to work with it, at least not right, right, right now. So I'm just cleaning my brush really quick while I talk to you guys. But if you guys want to switch for that part, let's say you do want to get your detail brush, the one that has like the little points, and you guys want to work with uh, one of those, then you can always switch to a pointed brush if, it, if you feel more comfortable with it. Okay, but I, I'm okay with using the tip of this. So now I'm gonna work a little bit more detail because we're not done just yet for this particular style that does uh, show that they use a little bit of outlining. So I'm gonna mix the black with the purple because I don't want it to be too, too dark with just black. And I'm going to just go ahead and outline my eye just to kind of get that effect. If your paint looks a little bit too thick and it's not moving for you, like you see how that kind of looks a little bit off. It's because you can add a tiny bit of water to it and it should flow a little bit better for you, okay? So if you put water in the paint, as you move across, you should be able to determine the line. So you can see it a lot thicker now. Um, and it just flows a little bit better when you're moving the, the brush stroke, okay? So I am going to put an outline around my eye because that's the way I see it over here. I'm also going to outline, so I'm gonna get a little bit more paint for this but I'm also going to outline just a little bit, just to define my, um, the actual eyelid, okay? Same thing goes for this eye. So I'll do the exact same thing that I did right now for this. So take your time with this guys, because if you're further behind than where I'm at with mine, it's okay, because I will post these up, the video. And so if you take a little bit longer, because you're trying to make sure that the line is as smooth and as uh, you know straight as possible, it's okay to do that because I will give you that time to catch up, okay? So I'm just gonna go in and just outline it like that and then do the same thing for my, my eyelid on this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just outline it. If it doesn't come out 100% perfect of a line, it's okay because of the style that we are working with. I just wanna get mine a little bit consistent here. So I'm trying to make the same on both sides. This one's a little bit thicker, so I'm just gonna come back and fix this part. And already like with adding some of this stuff, like I'm already starting to see some of the textures come out because it's it's starting to put like, if I do this, it's starting to create balance within the face and actually structure to it. Once we put the actual details here on the lower area, it's just gonna look that much better, okay? Now, if you want to add some eyelashes, especially girls, if you're looking at your pictures and you can spot them, I only see very little of mine right here at the edges. Uh, guys, if you see them, I know some of them are like, I don't want to add them because then I'm going to look like a girl. So if you don't want to do this part, it's okay. But technically, sir, there are some boys and usually I get very jealous because boys tend to have better eyelashes than girls do. They tend to be longer. So if uh, you see it, I recommend just adding it because it's, you know, it's part of the detail. It's part of putting down what you see. I don't see very much on mine. I only see very little and just on the edges. So that's all I'm going to add because my eyelashes here, if I look at mine and I study my face, because I've drawn myself before a lot with the, the self-portraits, I already know that these eyelashes tend to go down a little bit. So they tend to get covered with the line of my eye. You don't really see them in pictures and so forth. So I'm going to leave mine like that. If you wanted to add, and I'm just going to put just a little bit, even though I don't have dark hair, I'm just going to put just a little bit of black here, just because in my picture, it's just as dark as where my eyes are. So I'm adding a little bit to mine, but you don't have to if, if you don't want to, okay? You can keep them light if you were happy with the color you already had on your eyebrows. So I want to go on mine, for sure. I want to go just a little bit darker 
um, on the nostril, if I'm looking at my picture, this nostril is lighter than this side because that's where the shadow is hitting. So I, I'm going to use this color for this nostril. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit there. I'm going to leave this one as a light blue just because that's the way it is in my picture. It's darker on this side, like I said, compared to this side. Okay. But I will use the black just to outline a little bit because with this style, you need to bring out just a little bit of the detail. So this side of the nose, I'm going to add the detail. I'm also going to outline a little bit of this part because I noticed that on mine, I see just a little outline here on the nose because of the shadow. And then I'm also going to add just a little faint line right here on this side of my nostril. And so if you guys don't see it on yours, then leave it alone. But it's because I see it on mine, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add it. Okay. So now at this time, I'm going to go ahead and start with the mouth area. And it's like I said, for those of you guys that get to that part, because on yours, that's just as far as, uh, you know, you can get for today, because let's say you're working slower or uh, maybe on yours, like on mine, like I said, I'm going to put this color just because it is the same colors that I'm using, like on the eyes and so forth. And I already have it here, so I might as well use it. Uh, but I will go ahead and at this time um, work on this first, just in case that's as far as you're going to get for today. Okay, so um, let me just zoom in a little bit because I don't see a lot of the detail on mine and I want to be able to follow along. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with the light blue because you should always start off with the light colors first. So I am going to remove whatever paint I have on my brush. I'm going to rinse it because it was the dark colors that I was working with and I want to make sure that it's as clean as possible. One more time. And plus, you don't want to leave um, the paint on it for too long because it will damage uh, your brushes, guys. So you should every now and then in between the colors um, because it's acrylic and acrylic will dry on you and then it messes up your brushes. So I do recommend like maybe after every two or three colors that you work with, Wash it really good within the water, but of course, removing first so you don't dirty the water too, too much. And then make sure you clean it very, very well so that way you protect your brushes. Okay. Um, so now at this point, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to use because I still have this uh, light blue tone. So I'm going to start with the light blue first. And I'm going to go ahead and place it where I have my highlights and I have it on the bottom of my lip. So I'm going to put a stroke here, maybe one stroke here. And you guys might not think that you see the strokes very well. Uh, so I have one a highlight here and here. But at the very end, just like these, because they dry differently, you will see the strokes. So it is important for you guys to go in different directions, even though it's the same color. Uh, eventually, you're going to see some of those patterns. Okay, so I just put a little bit of the light tone first of where I have it. I'm going to remove it because I'm going to grab some of this other darker light blue version that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and place it on where I see it in my picture. So on mine, the mid-tones fall here. They fall right here on this part of the lip. I'm putting it here as a base coat because when I put the dark, because this technically has all dark, but I want to put it there as a base coat because once I put the dark on top, uh, you might see some spots through it, okay? And then for sure, I should also incorporate some of the mid-tones on mine right here. Now, remember, your pictures might be different, so follow what you see. You're putting highlights on highlights, mid-tones on mid-tones, uh, shadows on shadows. However, when you guys are applying it, just be uh, you know, aware that you have to make sure that you do strokes, okay? Don't try to mix and blend because that's not what we want for this style. We want to see the brush strokes here. Now, just to kind of see the difference between the lip, I am going to put just a little bit here, even though technically it's lighter, I can always go back and add some to that. So it's no big deal, okay? Um, I do have too much white here, like if you notice around the edges, but I don't want the same exact color of the lip. If I have my shadow here, then I wanna get the light tone and I'm just going to take it upward. So if you notice that I'm starting right here at the edge of my lip and bringing it up to create just some blue there. And then I'm even going to put just a little bit right here to kind of distinguish the where I have my, uh, because my lips are very pointy. So I'm just going to add a little bit there. Maybe I can put just a tiny bit there. 
And I'm probably going to change it a little bit, but just to kind of add some type of effect. Like I'll put a little bit more of the, the lighter, not the lighter, but the darker blue, but like with another stroke going like that, just so you see like a tone in there. Okay. So now at this point, this is where the shadows come in to make uh, the statement, you know, for the lips. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this dark color again. Now I don't want it too, too dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here first because I want, remember to get this kind of purple, it had more of like a red in it. So I want to add a little bit, like a tiny bit, not too much, but just a tiny bit of blue. Cause for me, that's too much of that other kind of purple. And I want it more of like a blue purple for that spot because it is the lip. And I even might even like this color just to put a little bit on the eyes, but I wanna do the mouth first. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put this stroke here just to kind of add, because if you look at my picture, this is where the shadow hits. And I actually like that color a lot. So I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of it in the eye right now. So if you wanna go back and let's say you make a new color, and you like the way it looks, add it where you think somewhere else so it creates balance, okay? So for me, that would be the eyes. If you wanted to add it to the eyebrows, that's another section you guys can add it to as well. So now that I have that, at least a tone of that, I'm gonna go back and we'll do that dark color. So I'm gonna come over here with the darks that I had originally. I just grabbed a little bit more and I'm using the other opposite side of that's another thing. If you don't have it all dirty, like I was mixing it with this corner, I can grab it with the opposite corner and then I can add that to it. And so now what I'm gonna do is I wanna add a little bit of outline to the mouth. So the major part of course is gonna be where the mouth splits. And I kind of still have that section there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slowly bring, and notice I'm using it to the side and I'm gonna just slowly kind of outline my mouth where it opens there. And I'm only going to try my best to outline just the very top part of my mouth. I don't want to really outline the bottom, maybe minus uh, another little section, which I'll see which part, but I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm probably only going to do the part over here where it casts the shadow. So if you are going to outline the bottom, don't outline the entire thing just outline the part wherever the shadow hits, which for me, it would only be like right here. You know, if I do want to put something on this side, like I said, instead of doing with the black line, what I would prefer to do is, you know, because my lip on the bottom is lighter, I would rather get the dark blue, well, not the dark blue, but the medium blue. So this is like the medium. So if I run out, make sure you mix more, but you know, all I do is get a little bit of this white paint, a little bit of this blue, come over here just to make a medium blue. Um, and what I would do instead of doing uh, the other part of it, I would rather kind of just add a few little dark elements to kind of outline it, but on my chin rather than, rather than outlining the full thing. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this medium to the face rather than outline in black. If you wanna outline in black, that's fine. If that's the style that you're going for and you'd rather add a little bit more of that, you can. But for me, I would prefer to do that and then maybe take a little bit of the light blue. I just added just a tiny bit of white to it and put a little bit more highlight on the lip so that way it enhances the lip a little bit more. Still with the strokes, I'm still doing strokes, okay? And see here, I accidentally went a little bit too far out because my mouth is more like tipped like that. So instead of, it's acrylic, if you accidentally mess up, you just come over here and get back that medium color and then just place it right on top and bring it out to fix the shape. Okay, so if you're not happy with your shape, you can always go back and fix those just by putting another stroke in there. So the thing I did not put yet on the eyes, does anybody notice what I had forgot to actually put paint on? Can anybody pick that up for me? I mean, I already spotted it, but I'm just kind of curious for you guys. You guys know what I had skipped, at least what process in the eyes?
Technically, you still see them. It's just I didn't put paint on them. Nobody, nobody can pick it up or identify what I skipped. So what I didn't do, if you guys didn't notice, were the highlights. And the highlights are just solid white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I, if you notice on my brush, like when I put it here, I only put it on the very tip. And what I'm going to end up doing is I'm all I'm going to do is just go back and touch where my highlights are, which are right here. I did have a little highlight right there that's missing. You can see that kind of brings out more detail. And then the other spots were right here. I actually have two on that part of the eye. And then this one, even though I left the white of the paper, I still want to make sure that it is paint. So I'll put paint right there. Okay, but those were the highlights that I missed. So if you guys have highlights, make sure you add them. Some of you might not see highlights on your pictures. If you didn't have a detailed picture to where you see that, then you just don't add it. It's just whatever you see on your picture. And like I said, if you guys got to that spot at this point and you don't, let's say it's the colors that you're using on the face, if they are very, gonna, they're gonna be very different. Cause you guys might opt to do, let's say a blue face. And then over here for the shirt, you want something more reds or maybe for the hair, you wanna do greens. And so you wanna kind of match it with the shirt. Then you would be the type of person, of course, that would stop at this point. So you can start working with those other colors on Monday. However, I know that I want mine the same color as the actual um, reference. So I know I want those same blues and so forth. I just like the way the picture looked because I was able to take, uh, remember I told you guys I took the filter lighting with my uh, saltwater tank. So I like those colors. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the full process because you know you see the face but now I'm going to add the shirt as well. And on this, like I said, I kind of want to stick to those same colors so since I already have them here I don't want them to dry up on me because by next Monday it there's a chance this will dry up maybe not the blue. Uh, because I did put a lot, maybe not all of the red. But this stuff, like this purple, there's a chance that that's going to disappear on <laughs> by next week. And I can possibly, yes, I know I can mix more. It's just I want to make sure that I use whatever I've got here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add those color tones here. I am going to switch brushes because this is too small for me for that section. So I'm going to move back to this one, which is the one I was using for these areas. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to, I need to wet my brush just a tiny bit. So make sure that it's it's loose because you want to always make sure that your brush when you put it on a paper I don't recommend touching it with your hands, but at least on a paper. If you do this and it's already uh, to the point where it's loose great I don't recommend grabbing it and doing this if your brush is ever stiff stick it in water and then lightly push on a paper to kind of loosen up uh, your brush okay if you have a stiff brush don't ever grab because we have oils in our hands. And if you mix it with the chemical that they put in the actual hair for these, um, eventually you're gonna mess up the brush and it's better to protect it, make it last longer. So you never really wanna touch with your fingers. The more you touch with your fingers, the, the faster your brushes will mess up. So you just wanna, like I said, just lightly touch it like that. So that way it's, it, the stiffness goes away, okay? So now at this point, like I said, I'm just going to use this paint over here. I do like the way it looks with the black. So I will be mixing both uh, because I'm not going to use this next week. I'm going to go ahead and if it gets dirty, it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to grab it so that way I can let me get a little bit lower on my thing here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing brush strokes. I know all of this is my shirt. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in with this color first. I'm just gonna go with brush strokes, make sure they're going in different angles. I kind of like that I can see this purpley coming through. And if I wanna make sure that I add a little bit of the color tone on there, what I could do is just make sure that I wet it. And so that way, when I come over here and I put some of the brush strokes on it, you can see it's like a see-through color of the version of that tone. So you can go ahead and do that as well. That's what water will do for you, okay? So I'll put a few with the water just to kind of get a different variety of that color. 
And then I'll go back and I'll just remix some more of this because I have it here, might as well mix it. I said, I don't wanna waste this paint and I know by next week that for sure is going to dry. So then I'll just go back and add where I have my white. And this is, that's why I want, knew I wanted to do this because I know how fast that's going to get covered. And then I like this purple that's over here. So I do want to use some of some of the light colors and I can do that to kind of go up on my shoulder where I see um, the strap going up. So I'm going to just add a few. I'm going to try to get some of this light tone because I do like this variety of colors that are here and I can just add a couple. It looks kind of dark right now, but like I said, as I dry, as it dries, if it's a light tone, it's gonna to get lighter. If it's a dark tone, it gets darker. And some of this will get covered when I start with the hair because I have all the hair coming this way. Um, I just wanna make sure that these areas uh, get covered for now, you know, for the sake of having and using all of the paint, okay? So as far as for today, guys, and actually, if I'm looking at this, I know my hair is going to be here, but that part of the neck looks a little too thin. So I might as well do it now since I have this brush already dirty. I'm going to have to wash. I'm just going to get some of this light blue because it's kind of like where the shadows are. And I'm just going to add a stroke in here just because it does look a little too thin for me. So go back at this time if you still have your colors, um, because like I said, on Monday, if you guys have certain tones in here, it's probably going to dry out on you. Some will keep, like if you have this much in there, that's probably gonna be okay till next week. This will dry out, this will dry out. Uh, the white might dry out, at least the top layer. So if I peel it off, I can probably salvage some of the paint under that. Same thing for the red, uh, but for sure like this kind of stuff is gonna go. So if you have tones like the light blue that for sure this all will be dried out by Monday. If you have tones on your, uh, you know, plate still that you can kind of see, well, I need to go back and I need to add something here. I see white of the paper and I don't want to see white of the paper, especially for those of you guys that uh, want to try sealing. And I know I put that there because I'm going to put the dark one on top, but I don't want to waste this paint. So I'm just putting it where I think it could go. You know, so like I said, Monday, I'm not going to have access to it anymore. So now that I have this, I can go back and mix a little bit of this medium blue. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do some of the placements on top because if you put a tone and then you put a tone on top of that, it just looks better, you know, like as far as the brush strokes. Um, so like right here, because this is all dark, but I just added it so that way when I go on top of it, it creates that pattern that I'm looking for. Okay, so I hope this made sense to you guys. And of course, I'm going to take questions right now. So I'll go ahead and I'll stop the video there just in case uh, you guys don't want to say the questions on camera. Uh, and that way I can post this for you. So that way, as you guys are uh, needing to rewatch the video, you guys can go back and watch it. But that's as far as I'm going to be going for today. So I did the shirt and I did the details on the face. If you were not happy with something on here, this is the time to go back. If you need it to dry a little bit before you paint on top of it, but this is the time to go back and make changes on this part, because the next part, you want to make sure all of that is complete when we start adding like the other elements, okay, the background, the other stuff. And usually for the most part, um, you know, some people will start with the background first, which yes, I do recommend because how we're putting things on top. However, the way that I'm gonna do my portrait and the way that I'm showing it, because the hair is gonna be on top, we're doing the background first, we can get away with that, okay? So I'll show you some different elements for those of you guys that might have started with this first and may, you know, depending on how much you were doing, may have wanted to start with the background first, there's still ways of going back on top of it to be able to clean up the lines, especially for this type of painting that we were doing, this style, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video there.